What's going on, everyone? It's Bales, and welcome back to another episode of AFL Fantasy Head to Head, where we put two players up against each other to see who'll be picking out of the two. This is episode 21 of the series. If you haven't checked out the other 20 episodes, make sure that you do. Joining me is another special guest. He was busy at the start of pre-season, but was able to uh, get some free time from him. Uh, he's uh, the man that finished third overall in 2021, if I have that correct. Uh, it is uh, DT Lemon. Mate, how are you? And did I get that correct? Was it 2021? Yeah, it was 2021. It feels like a long time ago now. So, um, yeah, I'm good, mate. It's uh, I'm excited to be back into pre-season. There's so much happening, so much information coming out of clubs. You know, we're getting intra-club uh, kind of sims now, match sims. We're getting all sorts of info, uh, and I think most people have had a few a few cracks at making their starting team already. So it's uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting. All systems go. Uh, yeah, I'm keen to chat about these two players today. I think we've got. Um, We've got yeah, they're very relevant and very similar players. I think we could have a really. I'm really interested to hear what you think, mate. So we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very intrigued by this uh, this combo as well because this wouldn't be one of the ones that probably in December January time we're probably thinking are, are going to be higher sort of on the list, but sort of last sort of a few weeks and whatever. And, and as we get close to pre-season games, these two are are very very relevant. And that is uh, Carl Amon and Nick Martin. Obviously, both very very similar. Both have got just mid status. And both have been rumoured to have this halfback role, which we'll speak about. But Carl Amon, 783k at the moment, sitting in uh, 4.63% of side. So been a bit of chatter, but still not um, too highly owned just yet. And then Nick Martin, uh, 769k, so just a little bit cheaper, 14k cheaper, and 1.58% uh, owned as well. So um, DC Lem will be taking Carl Amon as a former Port Adelaide player, and I'll be taking Nick Martin there. So uh, be very interesting to see uh, what we think. So. Lemon, mate, how about you kick us off with uh, Carl Amon? Why should people be selecting him in their side for 2024? Yeah, so a very interesting player, Carl Amon. Um, obviously spent, uh, I think it was eight years at, at Port Adelaide. I'm a big Port fan, so I saw him a lot. He was mostly playing on the wing pretty much exclusively for that time. Played a little bit up forward. Um, beautiful kick of the footy. Um, definitely a, an accumulator. Not much of a tackler, but um, a really good accumulator and a, a pretty good user of the footy. Then last year, moved to Hawthorne. Again, you know, played most of his time on the wing and he's he's a, a really great winger, but we saw at the end of last year, he played pretty much six games um, in the back lines, scored really well in that sort of heavy Hawthorne scoring back line. So um, averaged 110 basically as a defender in those last six games, which I think is massive. Um, I guess we can talk about whether that continues, but um, yeah, he's priced at 87 um, so if he can go anywhere sort of near that 100, 105, 110, maybe pick up defender status as well after round six, um, you're looking at a, a guy with good upside in the midfield who can then swing back to defense and you can keep him uh, pretty much through the whole year in defense. So a really interesting pick here. If he, it, it sounds like he's still training in that, that defense role with Hawthorne. Um, there's a few guys back there. You've got Sicily back there, obviously, who's who's normally the sort of main distributor. And you've got a few other users of the ball, but no one sort of as prolific as we saw Amon back in the, the back half of last year. So it's it's going to be a really interesting pick to see if he can maintain that. If he can, you know, even if he goes 100, I think, gets defender status, you're looking at probably a, a good pick. Um yeah, it's uh, it's it's a really interesting one for me. I'm I'm really keen to see how this this plays out in some of the uh, intra club games and at a practice game. Um, yeah, what do you, where's your head at, Bales? It's 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 interesting. I've I've never been a, a person to sort of pick a guy that is is I guess re, like relying on on defender stats to be added. But when we're sort of looking at like this, this is obviously a very different year. We've got opening round, best eighteen. You can maybe afford to take maybe an extra risk or two because it's only best 18 for the opening six rounds. So I think what best case, he, as you said, he goes that like 95 to plus um, mark. And, and obviously we saw that he can go at like 105, 110 for a prolonged period and, and get defenders status and be that guy that if he's going at like a 105 clip, he's going to be in the sort of top sort of two or three, four defenders. So um, if you get a guy like that priced below 90, then it's obviously a good pick. And, and even in a midfield slot, you're not, it's it's helping you because you're, not, you're going to get a guy that's going to be able to be a premium in another line. But um, Sanch raised a good point. I'm interested to get your thoughts on it uh, uh, when I listened to the Hat Chat pod, um, the recent one, um, is that he was saying that his scores were actually 
a bit down when um, like his big scores were when Sicily's scores were down, whether he was either tagged or if he was playing a more accountable role. So can you see both Sicily and Amon both scoring well, or do you see it being one or the other? How do you see sort of that back mix um, playing there? Because obviously we, we're going to see guys like Weddle um, and even uh, Jass going up onto a wing from what we're hearing. So how do you see sort of that mix of Hawthorne working in the back line? Yeah, I think it's um, it's very interesting. And obviously, if, if one of these guys gets clamped, if you know if Sicily gets clamped, you expect the other distributor to, to um, take a lot of the load. So I'm, I, I think that's definitely a, a possibility in in this upcoming season. I think what what worries me about that stretch of of six games is he had some pretty juicy matchups there. So his biggest score was one thirty eight in the back half of last in the last six games of last year. That was against Western Bulldogs. We know what they do to defenders. So um, you know that I don't. He's not going to play the Bulldogs every week. Um, you know, he had he had Fremantle, Melbourne, Richmond, North Melbourne, uh, GWS. Like, th- these teams aren't too hard to score against for defenders. So, um, I, I think, I think, yeah, definitely if, if Sicily's getting clamped and he, he did get a bit of attention to the back the back end of last year, uh, Amon's definitely going to get more of the ball. Will that maybe swing the other way uh, in 2024? Maybe teams will, will, will clamp Amon if he starts to really be damaging off that that back line. But um, I think the bigger the bigger issue for me is do Hawthorne keep playing this sort of chip around yeah, yeah. slow style of footy? You know, that it's, it's I don't think you can be a, a great, like a top sort of four side playing that kind of football. So I think the bigger concern is that Hawthorne as a team decide to move it out of their defense a lot faster. And then that's going to mean a decline for Sicily. It's going to mean a decline for Amon. Now, is that a decline from 110 to 95 or is that a decline from, 100 to 90 you know if he if he's a if he averages 90 and gets defender status i think that's a failed pick so um yeah what do you think about that bells yeah well like the thing that stuck out when you said that then if he averages 90 not only is he a failed pick but he's also clogging up a midfield spot as well from a guy where you could actually select someone potentially it could be someone like a an Ollie Wines, a Cam Guthrie, a Matt Crouch, a Josh Simpkin, someone in in that price range, or maybe the guy that we're going to speak about in a sec as well, that maybe they're going at 100 or just under or maybe just above. And, and then all of a sudden you're losing that 10 points. And then like the cash that you've maybe saved from maybe the 20, 30, 40K you saved might have got you a different player and everything like that. So it, it's, it is it is interesting um, how, how Amon's going to work. But then again, if it's, it's, it's that fine balance because then if, if he does end up working, then it's, it's a great pick. It's going to propel you because then you're going to have to, you're going to be able to trade a, a mayor mid price. Like it could be a Heath Chapman or something like that, um, or a Zach Williams or someone. You can swap them into your midfield at round seven and you can bring in a midfielder. So it's that high risk, high reward play that that I think fancy coaches are, are looking for as well. But it can also, it's one of those ones where you're not going with the crowd and it can hurt you more if it doesn't work, but it can also be even more beneficial for you if it works. So it is. It is um, such. That's why these two players are so interesting because they're both. That's pick, and I think they're both preseason watchers as well. So, um, but we will move to onto the other side, and um, and being Nick Martin, and he is a tiny bit cheaper. Played twenty three games last year, and Amon played the twenty one. So both um, sort of playing a lot of games. Then I don't think I don't think Nick Martin has actually missed a game, if I'm not mistaken. He might have missed one in twenty twenty. I'm seeing he's played twenty one games. In 2022, I can't recall if he missed one or not, but um, he's been very, very good at regardless um, through his through his career. So he's been a lot more of a winger, obviously burst onto the scene in 2022 when he scored that massive 130 points um, in round one of 2022. Um, incredible, 27 touches. I think there was, what, 10 marks there, and he kicked five goals. Um, I don't think we've ever seen a debut like that um, before. So came in. Went fantastic. Average of uh, 79.8 in his first season. Um, and then last year averaged the 85.2. Um, he, he's been, in terms of consistency, a little bit. He was a little bit up and down last year. Had some big scores in here. So just like some big scores, like 129 in round 22, 117 in round 17, 112 and 114, 111, 124, 104. That was in actually a, a, a stretch between rounds 10 and round 15, so sort of just before and just after his buy. So that's that's a bit of a sign of what he can do over a stretch. But then he had a 64 after that as well. He's had some lower scores there, a few like a 66, 61, 63, 67, a 52, a 32 in round 23 last year against the, the Giants. So very up and down. But that was as a winger. And, and we know that the wingers, back in the day, wingers used to be sort of what 
would, would be what we'd almost target for in, in fantasy outside the midfielders because you've got you've had guys in the past like Andrew Gaffs and that have scored highly. You, you Brent Stanton playing on a wing like the players of the past have scored well on a wing, but like now it's it's almost a graveyard shift and and half back is is where you want to go. But that's what he's been rumored to be. I, I saw a tweet that Kautumi said in the Matt Shims that. Nick Martin has been was been training in at half back and, and playing as that main distributor role, which is which is really what we want to hear. And and it'll be very interesting, intriguing to see because Essen have sort of have got Mason Redmond there. So we're probably thinking do they need another guy back there. But Nick Martin going back there, taking kick ins. So that's going to be really interesting to see if that is what happens. So Lemon, I'm going to go to you for this one here. If Nick Martin moves to um, a half back flank, do you see that as a positive for his scoring, or do you think that there's going to be too many guys back in the Bombers' bat line, like you already got your Ridleys and, and Redmonds, as I mentioned. Do you think there's too many guys back there, or do you think Nick Martin can become that number one guy and be a be a, a solid option that we we have to probably put in our watch list? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely the right question to be asking, Bales. So it's 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 really confusing that Essendon back line at the moment. You know, Redmonds a, a really great rebounder. We've seen Ridley do that role before. He's great. I think they've still got I think they've still got Nick Hind on their list as well, who's got some yeah, dash yeah. and. Um, you know, it's it's how many how many of those guys can you can you have and can you play and can you feed the ball through? Andy McGrath, um, Andy McGrath, of course. You know, he he was a, an elite midfielder before he started being in the halfback line. High draft pick. You know, he's a, a pretty good user of the ball. Uh, we had high hopes high hopes for Andy McGrath last year, and what did he put out like an eighty something average? So I think it's 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 a really really tough one to tell, and I think that's. That's why I probably like Amon a little bit better because we've seen him in that role for a few games at the end of last year. We've seen that they like the ball in his hands. If you throw Nick Martin back into the Essendon back line, you know, who are they going to go to? Him or Redman? You know, if who's going to take the kickouts? Him or Redman? I think uh, practice at the moment is is great that he's getting kickouts, but but I think during the actual season, I think there'll be more of a split. So I can see him taking maybe two, three, four kickouts a game, but I don't think he's going to be taking every single one. Um, and then the question for me is, where does he play during uh, you know that normal transition play? Is he the the deepest defender, and they're switching the ball back through him every time, or is he playing that Andy McGrath role where he's playing a bit higher up the ground? They're trying to hit him on the fifty, and then he's hitting that kick into the middle. So um, you know we've seen with Andy McGrath that he was playing pretty high up the ground, which normally is good for defenders in that Essendon system. You'd actually prefer to be the guy a little bit closer to goal who's doing the switch kicks. So um, I'm I'm a bit hesitant at the moment. I think he'll be a really interesting one to watch during the practice games, seeing where he positions. Does he take the kickouts, and then where does he go afterwards? You know, is he is, are they trying to hit him through the middle, or is he that switch guy? Because if he's the switch guy, and, and maybe they they might just say everything goes through him, all of a sudden you're looking at a guy maybe could average you know 100, 100 plus. We've got to remember he's only twenty two years old, so yeah. he's played two seasons in the AFL. He's averaged over or pretty much 80 and above for both of them. So that's that's pretty incredible, pretty incredible numbers. Is it a third-year breakout? Yeah, and that's a, that's another good point as well. I'm still, and everyone, pretty much everyone said this, said like we're all sort of flabbergasted that, that the fact that he didn't get picked up sooner because of, of how good he's looked. And and yeah, if like it's it's going to be, he's again, pre-season watch, and, and I think people sort of, people got to remember as well when they do say that players are playing a certain position, got to remember obviously they're playing against each other as well so they're going to have double the amount of players so maybe they just is it just a trial thing like is is he just on the other side and they're just sort of seeing what they can maybe get with him and maybe they move McGrath or wing or maybe they move someone else onto a wing and an interesting see so that's why this one is is very much a, a watch in the, those preseason games it, it almost would have been not a bad thing if he had the round five or six by because many would have played nothing round but we've actually been able to seen it in an actual AFL game which we've actually seen with Carl Amon like back half of last year. So that's the one thing I think that um, that Carl Amon does have over him is that, as you mentioned uh, before, that we actually have seen it for, for, for a stretch, not just a game or two. We've, we've seen it for like six or seven games. So, But I think Nick Martin, the one thing he has got is that if he does go in this role, I think it will be a lot better for him. I think it will raise his floor. I, if he's got the half-bat role and taking some kick-ins, I think that his floor will raise from those 50s to probably 65 being his floor, I think, in that role. Um, but then, obviously, we've seen he's got the ceiling in that wing role, and and I think that ceiling will just sort of continue um, if he plays off half backs. So this is this is very much a preseason watch, but it is time to choose who we'd be picking between two. I think we sort of half have alluded to it throughout the episode, but Lemon, who are you picking between Carl Amon and Nick Martin? Yeah, so I think at the moment um, I'd be picking Amon 
over just because he's a bit of a proven commodity. He's, he's played the role before and we've seen he succeeded in it. Even if he regresses from what he did in those last six games last year, you know, I can see him regressing to a 95 or 100, which is which is probably still makes him a keeper defender. Um, but I'm, I must say, Nick Martin, you know, 22 years old, where's the limit for him? You know, he could be a guy that averages 100 plus for five, six years as that, you know, intercepting, rebounding defender. Um, so he's not he's not far behind. And I really like what you can do in your team if you start one of these guys. They pick up defender status in after round six, and then you can maybe upgrade some of your mid-price defenders into a premium mid who's dropped. So it just opens yeah. up so much flexibility for your team rather than starting with an Ollie Wines or something that, you know, after round six, he's still a midfielder. You either have to upgrade him or you have to upgrade your mid-price defenders to a defender. So um, I think if you're comparing these guys to a, a, a midfielder who won't pick up an extra status, I think you can maybe give them a little little bump in your in your rankings there. So I, I'm probably just just aim on over Martin at this point. What about you? Where are you leaning? Yeah, I'm I'm aim on over Martin, but I could easily see it being once the preseason game is done, I'd be picking Nick Martin over Carl Aim. I, I could see that happening, but I will be going aim on now just because I have seen it, and this obviously this is um, sort of this will be sort of released in and around the sort of match sim. So we probably might even have an idea by the time this video is out um, of what Nick Martin's uh, doing. Um, so that'll be an interesting watch. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've just got aim on just ahead, but as you, as you mentioned, I think this is. This is, this is probably a good year to be taking a risk like this because of the best 18 in the first six weeks. And and if for some reason, like you, you pick Amon or Nick Martin, they're going at that sort of 90 or maybe just below or whatever, and it's sort of just like an almost a nothing pick. After If you've seen it for you, three games, already enough data. You can trade him and, and you've got guys like Sam Flanders, Sam Walsh, Tom Green. All these guys are coming off their bye um, around that time, and you can bring in one of those guys that have come off their bite if if they look like a good pick. So that that's why this sort of is, isn't a bad pick at all. But they've also got the ceiling where they could make your best eighteen and be a pick that you keep for the for the year and be a top six defender if they get defender status. So yeah, it is a very very interesting watch, and will be um, a big preseason watch in their in their game. So. Looking forward to seeing what they're doing. But that will be it for the Head Ted episode as well. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think of Carl Amon and Nick Martin. A little bit of a different um, episode. We've, we've focused, as I said, a bit on premiums um, throughout the series. We've we've touched on some mid-price, but I think these two are very, very interesting because they are some um, high-risk plays. But they can also be, and I say high-risk as well, but they're almost a little bit like not as high-risk because it's best data and you can, and you can move them with the um, uh, um, uh, two trades per week. And everything like that. So um, really intrigued to see what they do in the preseason. But yeah, let us know in the comments below what you think of those two and any other questions you guys have, put in the comments below. Or, you, or what do you think of the series as well? That's another thing you put in the comments as well. What do you think of the series so far? 21 episodes in and we haven't got too many left episodes left to go. Obviously, we're nearing the start of the season as well. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If we can get 50 likes on the video, that'd be um, absolutely fantastic. And then as we head towards 2,000 subscribers as well. But Lemon, mate, thank you very much for jumping on. I know you're a busy man, but thank you for um, putting a little bit of time out of your day to, to jump on uh, the series, mate. Where can the people find you on the socials and what can uh, people expect uh, from you around the community in 2024? Yeah, thanks, everyone, mate. It's uh, always great to chat fantasy and these two players are uh, very, very interesting. They'll be on my radar in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, you can find me on uh, Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, uh, at lemon underscore DT. Uh, and yeah, I'll be uh, floating on some podcasts, um, answering some questions. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much content I'll be releasing this year, but there might be a little bit more than last year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and yeah, let me know if there's something you want to you want to hear, or um, yeah, you want an opinion on a player or something. Uh, particularly strategy, I'm 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 really interested in the fantasy strategy. So there, there might be a little bit more coming out on that way. So yeah, yeah mate, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. And I'm sure we'll hear you at some point throughout the year on the AFL Fantasy Fanatics podcast as well, which uh, speaking of that, make sure you guys, uh, if you are listening to the podcast version, uh, make sure you do leave a five-star rating review. That'd be very much appreciated. It helps out the the channel. But obviously, me and Tim have been back behind the mics for, for a week or so now, which is fantastic. Uh, we're really getting to the uh, swing of things now. So, um, and yeah, but if you're listening on the podcast, just go over YouTube, subscribe and like the video. Or if you're listening on YouTube, do, do, do the same thing there. Um, and if you can leave a... Any support that you guys show is always um, it's, it's fantastic. Me and Tim uh, love all the support you guys have shown. And I'm at Bars DT on Twitter and Instagram. All my socials are in the description below as well. So go and follow those. Next episode, 
Um, get another special guest on another couple of relevant players. Hasn't been locked in yet, as we do is get near the end of the series. Um, we're sort of almost run out of the the sort of the relevant players to discuss, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, appreciate everyone's support on the series so far and looking forward to uh, the next episode. So thanks, Len, once again for jumping on and we'll catch you guys in episode 22. So we're out. Cheers.